And now, back to the Griffin Technology chat room and Craig Haverhurst and the man. Well, I'm feeling pretty good up here. Get to speak with the great Tom T. Hall. Welcome, Tom. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. So nice to have you here. You're the reason you can see how you inspired these folks. Uh, I was going to ask you, uh, had you, had you stopped to listen to these songs in many years before the, the gang showed up and started recording them at your place? Had you heard them in a while? Uh, no, uh, I, had, I had heard of all of these, uh, I guess they call them alternative, you know, music acts. And I was big fans of them, but I'd never seen any of them because uh, they stay up all night and I go to bed at dark and get up at daylight. So we didn't travel in the same circles. And then they all showed up at Fox Hollow and I got to meet uh, and put faces with the voices and everything. And right. it uh, was a great kick for us. And we, it was a great week or two that we spent doing that. And I loved having them there. I wanted to lock the gates and keep them a while, but uh, they, you know, they work in and I'm retired. So they I bet they'll come gates. back anytime. Well, we, you and I got to talk about this record, uh, walking, at, walking around Fox Hollow. And this is, not quite as pleasant a surroundings, but just about. And, and it was really a special place to see and, and hear the sounds of that, of that space, the peacocks calling, the birds. It is just a, a place kind of very far away from the Nashville and the Cool Springs Mall that's over the hills. And, and you've been there for quite some time, but this, that place directly inspired this record. And if you just tell that story briefly, I know you told it for, the, for several uh, you know, articles, but uh, you, you were hosting some nephews. I had two nephews, and they were, I think, uh, five and six years old, and uh, they spent the summer with us, and uh, they came from France. They came here from France, and uh, Monaco, south of France, and uh, of course, I had them there on the farm, and, and they thought I was a cowboy. <laughs> I was, when I was, we were unpacking in their luggage, they had a comic book called, and they were from France, you got to get that. And the book was called El Stranger Solitaire. And I, I don't speak much French, but I said, that's got to be the Lone Ranger, right? right. <laughs> so they kind of looked at me as a cowboy and maybe a friend of the Lone Ranger, which I am. And, uh, and we got to roaming around the farm, and I got the things that I was, sorry to say, taking for granted. They were fascinated by him, you know, like, They'd say, one day we were walking along and they said, Uncle Tom. I said, yes. And they said, where's the fox? And uh, I hadn't thought about it, but we call it Fox Hollow. And we'd been there for two months and they hadn't seen this fox. Right. So that uh, incidents like that, I started, I'd roam around with them all day. And then almost by a process of osmosis, if you will, I'd go back and, and write all these things down. I didn't even know I was writing an album. I was just right. putting down some of the things that they were seeing and um, got lucky and it turned into a you know children's album. And now, 40 years later, all of this. Last time I heard this show, I was backstage. <laughs> and this time I got to sit in the audience and I was, it's, it's one of those experiences where you uh, laugh a little bit and then you cry a little bit and right. then they sing something else and you laugh and then you're crying and it's a kind of an emotional roller coaster oh, but nice. I'm having fun anyway nice nice the song I care that Tommy just did uh, most of the songs on the record can be traced to some critter roaming around but I care is a song that is really not about a specific uh, episode but but a real kind of uh, empathy with with what kids go through. What, do you recall writing that or why that song wound up on the record? Well, I often tell people that I love children and one of the reasons I do is because my mother had some. <laughs> and uh, I remember being a kid and my favorite line in that song is when they take you someplace and you sit in a chair. Yeah. Now, what you gotta think about it for a minute. If you're five years old, you don't have any damn business sitting in a chair. You got, you got stuff to do, you know? And, and the parents are sitting there, stay in that chair, you know, sitting in the chair. So I, I kind of built the song around sitting in the chair and then all the other stuff kind of fell in place. Right. 
Do you think of the songs on the Fox Hollow record as in any way different than the songs that you had recorded by others, the songs that people have pointed to as very literary? Well, you know, when I first came up with the idea, I called Jerry Kennedy, my producer, and I said, I've, I've got all these songs and I want to do a kitty album. And I could hear him falling out of his chair. <laughs> and when he got back up, he said, uh, you know, you're famous for faster horses, younger women, older whiskey, more money, I like beer, yeah. working in graveyards, and you want to do a kitty album? And I said, yeah, I got 12 songs and we got some musicians. And he said, well, come on down, we'll try it out. So, yeah. and I've had a lot of ideas like that that didn't work, but this one did. Right. So. Were you flabbergasted that it produced legitimate hits, that it was getting rocked on the radio? Well, the thing that amazed me the most was Sneaky Snake. Really, that was the first one I put out. And I'd be driving down the road and we had a CB radio on in our bus, and back in those days, there were big. It was a big thing, and we wouldn't we wouldn't travel 30 or 40 miles. We'd run into a truck driver whose handle was Sneaky Snake, <laughs> and these these are grown men. These are truck drivers, and you know they're they're into Sneaky Snake, and I thought, well, you know, yeah. And they're probably singing "I Love Little Baby Ducks" too as they drive down the road. Well, I did one incident. I did meet Farron Young in an airport. Right. right after I put out that record. He said, man, have you gone crazy? I said, what happened? He said, I just heard your new record on the radio. Baby ducks. <laughs> but he had a lot more colorful language than that. But, uh, and I, it hadn't, it, the record just came out. I said, ooh, maybe that's not gonna work, you know. Right. But it did, thank goodness. <laughs> well, just uh, to wrap up, uh, what are you doing these days? Are you writing much? Tend in the farm. Miss Dixie and I, uh, right, uh, have built an acoustic music studio. We don't, uh, we're into, uh, you know, acoustic music and bluegrass music and folk music and that sort of thing. We don't have any amplifiers on the property, no <laughs> drums, no keyboards. And uh, in fact, we would record in the dark, you know, we don't even like electricity. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, you gotta have, to run the equipment, you gotta have some electricity, <laughs> but, but we're real purists nowadays. And, we, and uh, it's the kind of music you can take out under a tree and it's kind of music I grew up playing, you know, sure, when I first right. started, so. Because where I grew up, we didn't have any electricity. Maybe that's the reason I got into acoustic music. Never thought about that before. <laughs> Well, you guys have been wonderful to the community and, and, and brought in folks that were ready to make that first or second album and given them a place to do it and, a, and, a, and an environment that could bring out the best in them. So we appreciate that. Well, Craig, we appreciate the, the Loveless Barn and uh, all of these wonderful musicians. I hardly know what to say about it, but I, I would like to say this while, if I take a minute of you your bet. time. Uh, the last time I was out in public, and they, they don't let me out very often, thank goodness. So I don't want to frighten anybody and let them think I'll be back next week. But I, got a, I read a story in the paper and it said, Tom T. Hall thanked everybody but his dog. You know, when my friends come to the show, I like to mention them, you know, and thank them because I love my friends. And uh, there's a saying that if you live your whole life and you have one friend, you're a lucky person. And I've got a lot of good friends. So tonight, I would like to thank my dogs. <laughs> we, have, we have two wonderful dogs, and they're listening. Uh, Banjo is a rescue dog. She's a little basset hound that we rescued. And Pal, the wonder dog, who rides around in the truck with me. Uh, ladies don't ride in pickups, you know, but Pal does ride around with me. And uh, they're at home now, and they have their own laptops, and they're listening. <laughs> in fact, Banjo has her own Facebook page, uh, and got thousands of little puppy friends around the world. 
So if, if whoever wrote the last story on me, they can say, he finally got it all done. He thanked his dogs. Tom T. Hall, the man with a million friends. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it.